Hello, before I start, this video is made possible because of the lovely people at createyourworld.co.uk who have kindly gifted me these products for me to make this video. Today I'm giving my kitchen a cheap and easy makeover to turn my kitchen from this to this. In this video I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. I'm not an expert but you really don't need to be to use this stuff and I'm hoping that this might give you a little bit of inspiration to do something similar to your own, especially if you're on a budget. These are DC Fix products which I have used before on lots of areas of my house and I absolutely love. I'm going to be using the DC Wall 3D tile wallpaper in the slate bricks design because I've always wanted grey tiles and I think this one will give me a really great mock grey tile effect. For the surface I'll be using the DC Fix sticky back plastic in the wood grain San Remo oak design. Firstly, you'll need to prepare the area that you'll be sticking everything to, just to make sure it's rid of any dirt or dust. Removing the silicone completely will give you a nice right angle to fit both the wallpaper and the vinyl against perfectly and then to create a straight edge to put new silicone along. Using a hairdryer to remove the DC fix helps to soften the seal and make removing it so much easier, so if you ever decide to change it in the future you can use this method to remove it. You will have already measured the area before ordering, but like myself you might find that you have a little bit too much, which is still better than too little, so it's best to measure the area again and cut the paper to size, still remembering to leave a little bit of excess which will be trimmed off after application. Remember to turn your electrics off before doing this bit. You can then unscrew the plug sockets and pull them away from the wall slightly to help tuck the wallpaper behind when trimming around them. createyourworld.co.uk kindly provided me with the DC wall glue which is specifically designed to glue this wallpaper to tiles even if they've been painted like mine. You'll then want to apply the glue to the tiles. I was pretty worried about running out of glue so I used quite a thin layer which seems to have secured it just fine but I think putting more on would do no harm either. You can now put the wallpaper into place. I felt like I could have done with an extra pair of hands at first but once I'd stuck the first end down it stayed in place for me to run to the other end. Before letting it dry, cut around the plug sockets by scoring a line across each corner. Then pop the socket through and push the paper down into place around them. I used the DC smoother to help smooth this down but you can just do this one with your hands. I did like the way it got right into the edges though. If you trim the edges as close as you can and tuck any excess behind the socket you'll be able to screw the sockets back into place. All kitchens are different, but you'll probably have smaller sections which might seem fiddly, but the paper is really easy to cut and line up with the tiles. You can always cut away any excess to make it neat. That's the tile makeover complete, a whole new look without replacing the tiles. It's as simple as that, following these steps you'll now have given your old tiles a new modern look. You'll want to use silicone to seal all the edges, but if you're putting DC Fix on your worktop too, you'll want to leave that until the end. Fixing the sticky back plastic to the worktop is an even easier job because it's already sticky and you don't need to use the glue. Start by cutting it to size in different sections along the worktop. Doing it in different sections is easy and you can overlap it and line it up really easily. The wood effect really helps each bit blend in so once it's stuck down you don't even notice the joins. Peeling back the backing paper just a little bit at one edge helps you line it up and stick it into place. 
Slowly peel it back a little bit at a time and smooth down each little bit with the smoother, trying to push out any bubbles you can as you go along. If you have a worktop like mine, a good tip is to take the drawers out and tuck the excess underneath the worktop. Trimming along the edges and making the corners neat is easy using the knife provided in the application pack. To cut the corner neatly, cut a line from the corner of the paper to the corner of the surface. Then fold one piece into the corner overlap the other piece and then trim any excess. If you do find any bubbles left after sticking the whole thing down, you can get them out by using a pin to prick a tiny hole in the centre of the bubble and then ease the air out using the smoother. I'd never used this method before but it worked perfectly. Here's an example of me applying the same method to other sections of the worktop, as each bit is different in size and shape. Much like the windowsill when doing the tile area, there'll be fiddly bits like the sink area, but using smaller sections for each bit around the sink will make it easier and you can just use the knife to cut it in around the edge. When applying the silicone, a good tip is to use masking tape to perfect the line and also to dip your finger in some washing up liquid mixed with water and then smooth your finger along the line to push the silicone into place. That's this kitchen makeover complete. I completed this DIY project in under 8 hours, including camera setup time. Thanks again to createyourworld.co.uk for providing me with these beautiful products. I'll link everything I've used down below and I wish you all the luck with your own makeover. If you found this helpful and want to see more like this in the future, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.